Hello friends! Today we're doing an acrylic painting of two birds and I'm going to start with a purple and yellow paint. I think this is ultramarine violet and then a cad yellow and then just some white and uh, then I'll add a couple two or three more colors later on uh, but one thing that's nice about acrylic paints is you can paint in layers and not have to wait forever for the layers to dry. So you can get a lot of interesting effects uh, this way. So I'm just going to start with a very loose, um, just kind of blocking in my shapes and co colors. Um, and since this isn't going to be the exact last like the exact color of the birds. They're not going to be purple. Um, I'm just laying down the kind of like the undercoating or the ground layer. And this is a, can a stretched canvas. And um, another thing nice about working in layers on canvas is because it's got texture, you can uh, see some of the under, uh, the first layers. Uh, under kind of peeking through the later layers or the top layers. All right, so I'm going to paint two young swallow birds, or I think, yeah, they're barn swallows, and uh, I'm going to keep the colors pretty neutral. It's going to be a pretty limited palette, but I do add a red and a brown uh, to this yellow and purple later on just to expand a little bit because I can't there's only so much dark I can do with the purple and I want to bring them more true to their actual colors as well But the reason I'm doing uh, the ground and it doesn't necessarily matter that it's purple is because, well, uh, when I mix the yellow in with it, you can see that the purple turns brown anyway. Uh, but uh, I don't mind a little bit of colors peeking through. That'll just give the painting a little more interest and texture. And I do use a couple mediums with this acrylic. I think I'm going to get one right now. <laughs> um, okay, well, we're going to work on the background right now. I'll tell you a little bit about the mediums I'm using. It, uh, one's um, a glaze that can kind of slow down the dry time and give you a little more time to work the paint. It also will make the paint more transparent and the glaze I have is a gloss color which means it'll have a sheen to it. So I'm thinking that they might have one that's more matte or satin maybe uh, since this one actually says gloss on it. I don't know. I'm pretty new to using the uh, mediums that you add to your acrylic paints. Alright, so you can see here now I have kind of a yellow ochre background and then I've just added a little bit more to the birds. I did add the pyrrole red into the mix and I think I also to make the branch darker added some burnt umber to the palette. So we're just going to work on starting to add some of the details like the beak, the feet, maybe a place the eyes. And the way I do my background is I try to uh, just do it really loose and then add a few more, like change the background color a little bit, the mixture just to vary it so that it's not just all one col solid color. But yeah, I wanted to keep it kind of tightly confined to the same value and uh, pretty close in, uh, on the color wheel. 
So I wouldn't do like the compliment on the background. I want to keep it uh, very close. I end up with, I think, adding some blue. So I think I must have added some blue to the palette because I add cobalt, I think, to the background. And you can kind of see that in this green. I've added the um, some cobalt blue and it brings in some greens. And it's nice to have a few transparent colors like the ultramarines and the cobalts because you can do glazes with them. And by glazing that's usually meaning um, you could do it just direct on the canvas uh, with nothing underneath, but you usually I let it dry and then I put a coating of transparent paint over the top of other paints. So that was the uh, liquid uh, gloss um, that I was telling you about. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna get it. And see what it's called exactly. I forget. Alright, it's called a gloss glazing liquid. And then the I also use another medium. So you can see here the lavender had the it's a glaze with the added glazing liquid. So it just makes it more transparent and it also kind of binds the um pigments because if you water them down too much they'll separate. Not that that's always a bad thing. Sometimes I actually do that on purpose with oil paints, especially. Um, but then the pigments will literally break apart, and they'll be like kind of like the dried powdery pigments. Um, so these mediums help bind everything and help them to kind of extends what you can do with them, which is nice with oil paint because oil paints. I mean, I'm sorry, with acrylic paints, because acrylic paints are in some ways more restrictive than oil paints. For example, just the fact that they dry so fast, they also just don't have the same luminosity that you have with oil paints. I think that's one of the main things. Here's the um, high solid gel mat, which can help it feels kind of like a whipped lotion, uh, as you see there, the consistency of it. But it helps make really thick and pasto layers without just doing, you know, pure paint, which is going to maybe get dimples as it dries. Uh, but this will hold it in a high... Uh, layer give so you can do texture with it i'm going to mainly just use it on the feet here and the legs so because they're kind of a color that's hard to see just kind of like a creamy flesh color so this kind of makes them stand off the canvas a little bit i don't always like to do that um especially with oil oil paints but it is kind of fun every now and then to to play around with, especially like I said with acrylic paint, play with some of these mediums and just push push your art a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily, like I said, want to just make this a sculpture, it's a painting, but um, a few of these tech, uh, fun mediums 
you know, I think they can add a, a little bit to the painting. With it staying true to uh, its roots, which is a painting and not a sculpture or mixed media, it's strictly a painting. All right, so I think I just added some more of that gel, the solid gel. Hi, solid gel. And this one says matte on the jar. So I the liquid glaze I have is glossy, and then the gel I have is matte. So they probably have a, a glossy version of it also. All right, so you can see I add a little more yellow now and maybe a touch of blue. And it's not, I don't have a lot on my brush. I actually recorded this in Idaho. I was having trouble with the internet. It's not very fast out there and I couldn't get this loaded. I also only had iMovie on my phone out there and it wouldn't let me. I tried uploading this and when it finally loaded it said it wouldn't because it's over 15 minutes and I my account I can list longer videos. Accounts that are brand new you can't list a over 15 minute video uh, but I can um, for some reason it wasn't letting me on my phone. Not sure why it didn't recognize that my account is has been okayed for longer videos. Alright, we're almost done here. Just adding a few more details. So we've got uh, the dark feathers and uh, you can see a little <laughs> little bits of purple and that glaze on the part of the brass which kind of adds some shadowy areas and uh, then we have the yellow, kind of yellowish turning green off on this left side of the birds and then now I added you can see I definitely added a cobalt blue and it made a very green green I'm gonna I think try to remedy that a little bit I'm um, first trying to bring the value back up to uh, as light as the yellow that's already on there and then I'm adding uh, some of the glaze to just kind of thin it out so it's less opaque, even though with the white paint, it's still going to be opaque. All right, it's getting a little closer now. Feeling a little more happy with where it's at as far as the background and making sure it's not distracting from what is already there. So I think I'm trying to warm it up a little bit now. I feel like it's too cold or cool so I'm adding some red to it even though this is a cooler red because it's a pyrrole red um, it should help a little bit and just tone it down so it's not like a bright green and there I think that's looking better I'm gonna even add a little more yellow I think all right yeah Anyway, I know you can't see all of that, but you can see a little bit of it. I wanted to keep it the camera focused. This is, this is just my phone that I'm filming this on. I wanted to keep it focused on the painting. And if I panned out too far, um, I don't know, you'd see the floor and a bunch of other things. If I showed the whole palette, so I decided to just keep it uh, pretty intimate like this. Alright, so 
with acrylic it's similar to oil paint in that you can paint on top of layers unlike watercolor where you can't there, once something's down you can't really cover it so uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna adjust I think the green on the bird on the right's head is taking off part of his head so I come back here and put his head back and then it smushes his eye so now I'm gonna fix his eye that sometimes happens but hopefully it'll look better than maybe before even sometimes that happens too these highlights in the eyes are super important to make the eyes stand out All right, I think we're about done. Yay, just a few more touches it looks like. Gotta get my initials on here. And I think I... Haha, <laughs> so somehow we... This got messed up. You're seeing something in reverse here. Maybe you were wondering before how those highlights got on there. Now you see. Doesn't that make a difference though? And it looks like I'm adding a few little touches of highlights to the breast. All right, well, I'm just gonna leave this unedited. So now you know, you see this part and then you see I added the green to the background. And that's how it all came together. All right, now I think I have one more clip here and then we're done. So it looks like 